It's a great day, my amazing CEOs. It all started in 1952 when a South African chemist by the name of Graham Wolf noticed a problem. His wife and many other women wanted deep hydration or to use some skincare, but the skincare they were using was too thick, it was too heavy, and it didn't feel good. Now, this was more than just a, a skincare problem, by the way. This was a problem that many companies have when it comes to sales. They're offering a product to the marketplace that is either outdated, everyone doesn't really need it, or they only use it because it's the only product that's available, by the way. So Wolf, a chemist aside, he's going to do something about this. He's going to change this, by the way. Isn't that kind of cool? So he said, look, I'm going to create something. I'm going to go ahead and create a lightweight and moisturizing solution, and I'm going to call it Oil of LA. Now, you think about it. You want to get in that type of business with all the competition back in 1952. You didn't have computers. You didn't have AI. You didn't have Google. But he did it anyway. And as a result of just solving a problem and having a smart sales strategy, his product went all over the world. Now, you fast forward from 1952 all the way to 1999, and he said, you know what? I've got to do something different. I've got to improve what I have now. The market has changed. The women have changed and they're looking for more. So once again, he shifted his sales strategy. Said, wait a minute, we're going to start with oil of Olay. We'll just call it Olay. And then we'll let them know that we're introducing another innovation that can help their skin even be better. You know what? The market responded. And then later in 1999, he continued to do what he was doing. But this time he built more collaborations he had more partnerships, and as a result, all of LA, or they call it today, Ole, became the product that we all know it is as it is as of today. So what's the big takeaway that I have for you as a CEO this morning? This isn't a, a, a case study about product evolution. It's not a case study about you have to make change. It's a case study about having a smart sales system, a smart sales strategy, bringing those two together and implementing it and as a result, solving a client problem by building trust. And in doing so, they see their profits go up, 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 and away. With that being said, by the way, my name is Shea Brown. Welcome to the CEO Sales Huddle. It is an honor and a privilege to serve you. And every morning we get started, we love to get started the exact same way. And that is with our mantra. And our mantra is, if you can't focus on sales, you can't be in business. Let's talk about why. Because sales is the oxygen for every great business in history. And without sales, there's always more money going out than there is coming in. So what's the point? The point is, and this is the bumper sticker that I want you to have, sales is serious business. In fact, do me a favor right now. Do me a favor. Go ahead and, go ahead and repeat these words. If you can't focus on sales, you can't be in business. <coughs> why? Because sales is the oxygen for every great business in history. And then immediately we have, after we do that, our next step is we go look and say, wait a minute, as a CEO, there's something that we need to do as a CEO. And that is we gotta make a pledge to our sales department. And our pledge to the sales department is we're gonna learn, we're gonna earn as a CEO, and we're gonna return. Because as a CEO to the sales department, there's three things you're responsible for. Share, giving the sales department the people, and if it's you right now, then you're the number one salesperson on your team, by the way. Also sharing with them the resources they need and giving the sales department the process it needs. So we're going we're gonna to stand up to that commitment. So go ahead and repeat these words after me. If you can't focus on sales, you can't be in business. Now, I have to learn something new, number one. Number two, in order to earn new revenue from existing clients, in order to get new and old clients to return. So I must learn, I must earn, and I must return. Our focus every morning is from our objectives are really threefold. Number one, we show up during this CE sales huddle, and it's an honor to be in your, in your living room right now or to be in your ears right now, or maybe I'm on your tablet or maybe I'm on your watch or your phone, and we have three objectives. The first one is to really get sales progress. So if sales is the oxygen, then we're going to track, we're going to measure, and we're going to take it to another level. Number two is to handle any roadblocks that are out there. That's important. And number three is to understand the five sales pillars that every CEO must know and understand in order to be successful. There's only five. Sales pillar number one is you must have a CEO sales plan, a one-page CEO sales plan. Number two is you must 
have, understand the sales cycle that your clients are going through. Number three, the sales message, the words that you're using, because at the end of the day, your words will make you rich. And then number four, you must understand your CEO sales dashboard. I've said it before, and we're going to talk about it. We go deep in this in a few minutes. But what gets measured gets managed. What gets managed gets better. And number five, you got to have a sales team. I mean, even if you're a sales team of one, you've got to have a sales team in order to generate revenue. And I'm often asked the question, Shay, for those folks that are tuning in, I want to connect with you. How can we best connect? Here's what I'd like for you to do. If you're watching right now live and I respond to everyone, do me a favor. Look right below the video. If you can do this on social media and put hashtag I'm here. Hashtag I'm here is the bat signal that you're here right now. We appreciate it. You're in this conversation. If you're watching on one of our on demand platforms, hey, this is why we get together for this short period of time. Do me a favor. Tune in now and go ahead over there right now and um, put hashtag replay, hashtag replay. And if you can't do it, just put, go over to at I am Shay Brown, drop me a note, let me know that you're in this conversation. I love to connect with you. But here's the question that comes up, Shay, what's the purpose of the CEO sales huddle? The purpose of the CEO sales huddle is a place where CEOs gather to understand how to sell more faster. So we get that you know how to sell, but how do you sell more faster? Our big why at the end of the day, because you know you could be doing something else with your time, but you've gotta be here. You've gotta generate sales in the business if you wanna stay in business. And that is, our big why is it's all about sales growth. It's about sales accountability, and it's about consistency. And you may have heard this before, but it's so true that consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. And when you look at where there's typically a struggle in any area in the life where you're not getting results for some folks, and I've been there many times, it's about us being more consistent. So that's why we're in this conversation. We're here to serve and we're here to make a difference for other folks that are out there. OK, and then how, how much time do we need? We only ask for 15 minutes a day. Why is that? Well, that's 1% of the day. I mean, think about it. In your business, you're going to give 1% of your day to sales and be in this conversation. There are 1,440 minutes in every day. 1% of the day represents 15, 15 minutes. And we're about 15 minutes every single morning here. So that's all we ask for, 15 minutes a day. But what's our number one outcome? Our number one outcome is for you to generate $100,000 plus over and beyond whatever you're earning today in your business. As a result of you serving, as a result of you having a smart sales system, as a result of you having smart sales funnels, and at the end of the day, you are having a sales strategy that provides you the resources that are necessary to execute the big, big, big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. Because without resources, it's very hard to execute the vision. I mean, it, it just is. I mean, you can think about it. You can pray about it. You can talk about it. But when you don't have the resources, it makes it really, really hard. It's not impossible. just makes it a lot more challenging than you want. And now we move to one of my favorite segments. They're all my favorite, obviously, or we wouldn't do them. And this segment is when we start looking at the CEO sales dashboard. And CEOs had a problem. And the number one problem was, hey, Shay, I'm, I'm cool with getting to $100,000 a month. I'm, I'm good for increasing sales. I, I want to see my revenues increase. I want to have more income and more impact. I want to make a dollar and a difference. But how do I get there? And I said, well, what are you measuring? Now, now we have a philosophy. And the philosophy is what gets measured gets managed. What gets managed gets better. Now, I've never measured any area in my life on a consistent basis. And it didn't see some type of improvement, okay? It's it just, it just it's impossible for that to happen. So I said, what are you measuring? And truthfully, they didn't really have a, a, a CEO type of dashboard that they can measure from a CEO level. And so we created something. It's a CEO sales dashboard. It's something we've been using for many, many years. And the CEO sales dashboard allows you to focus really on five key areas. And those key areas are leads, appointments, offers, deals, and repeat business. Now, you think about that. Your business has some drivers, and those drivers really drive the whole business. And, and, and just one sales conversation could shift the trajectory of your business. And, and so let's take a look at that right now. And if you haven't already downloaded the CEO Sales Dashboard, you can go over to www.ceosalesdashboard.com. Download it now. We're going to show you in a second exactly what it looks like. Let me make sure I get that there so we can, so we can show you. And there it is there. It should be popping up in a second. I mean, hopefully it's popping up. And if you look there, you've downloaded it. It's an Excel, it's a spreadsheet. 
And in that spreadsheet, you're going to go all the way across the top and you're going to look in that spreadsheet and say, OK, here's today's date. Then you're going to go across the top and say, well, there's leads, there's appointments. Got it. So how many leads came into my database yesterday? How many appointments were set on my calendar yesterday? And I let folks know if you need to focus on two areas, focus on leads, focus on appointments, focus on leads, focus on appointments. And then there's did I make any offers? Did, did I at least share with people how we could solve a problem? How many was there for your sales department? Now, you can customize these. I can't get into every single one in the time I have, but we will go down and look at deals. And that's important because when I first started, all I wanted to know was, did I get a deal? Did I get a deal? Did I get a deal? And I wasn't even really measuring it. And we know what gets measured gets managed. What gets managed gets better. Yeah, yeah, I said so well. You're so true. So let's take a look at this right now. And let's look at deals. And go ahead right now. You put down how many deals closed? Closed means you got the, you got the credit card payment. You got the wire transfer. Uh, maybe the, the contract came back signed. It's a done deal. The team is going to be off and working. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to say, you know what? We're going to acknowledge the efforts that we've done and the other work that we've done. And look at some other key areas. So one of the key areas I want you to look at is what deals are pending. And there are three categories I look at when I look at pending. I look at deals that are hot. That means in the next zero to 10 days, they have a high probability, 90% more of closing. And there's a lot of reasons because many of you are in different industries, you're in different places, different spaces, but maybe the person has to just get the contract in their hand. Maybe they're um, wiring the money over tonight and you should see it tomorrow, right? It's, it's, a, lot of, it's a lot of different variables there. You, you do what works best for you. And then there are deals that are going to happen in the next 10 to 20 days. And when you follow back up with them, you, you've got to at least reconnect. Maybe you have to have another conversation, but it's just that close. And then last, the deals of 20 days or more, um, I'm like, that's just not happening. Okay. I mean, it could depend on the industry. And, and I'm not saying you don't follow up because I get it. Follow up, follow up, follow up till they buy or die and that type of philosophy. And you will follow up, but you might not put them down there in pending deals 10 more. Maybe they go back into the sales funnel and you're setting another appointment with them because you got to reconnect. You got to remind them. I mean, think about it. You remember the conversation you had with someone 30 days ago? You might remember parts of it, but isn't it cool when they bring it back top of mind to you? So that's the CEO sales dashboard. What gets measured gets managed. What gets managed gets better. I want you to focus on today, which is just at least measuring the deals that come in. And use the CEO sales dashboard. It's the number one tool that's helped many of my clients get to $100,000 or more of consistent, predictable, reliable income. And now we're going to go, we're going to celebrate some wins. That's our next segment. We're going to say, you know what? There's some things we did really, really well. There's some things we're really proud of. There's some things that happened in our sales organization. Even if you are that person, that has really helped. So let's, 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 let's acknowledge that. Powerful people ask powerful questions. Why? Because questions, they're focused. And in this life, you get exactly what you focus on. So we're going to ask ourselves three questions. We ask it every single day. This is just for the sales department. This is not about your health. It's not about your relationship. It's not about your finances. We're not looking at any of those areas right now. We're focusing on sales because if you can't focus on sales, you just can't be in business. So let's look at that. Here we go. Number one, what are you most proud of for the sales department yesterday? We're talking about yesterday. Number two, what was your biggest accomplishment for the sales department yesterday? You look at all the effort in the sales department yesterday. And number three, what's the, what do you really want to brag about? If I could bring you on right now and we could go live and I can't wait till the day come, we can do that. We've all, we're pretty close with that technology. And you could just jump on or you could stream it in and say, this is what I'm most proud of for our sales department yesterday. What would it be? Isn't that kind of cool? But again, we don't show up every morning and believe that everything is rainbow, cupcakes, and unicorns, that it's all perfect. We understand that life happens and there's business decisions. So now let's go look at the other side and let's go look at any hurdles that we have in the business. And powerful people ask powerful questions. Why? Because questions steer focus. And in this life, you get exactly what you focus on. So three questions. Number one, what was your biggest roadblock yesterday for the sales department? We're not talking about your health. We're not talking about anything else, but just the sales department. Number two, what's preventing you today from moving forward? And number three, what's the one thing you can do today? That if you did it, it would just move the needle. Isn't that kind of cool? Isn't that a way to go? So my message to you today you're out there, my message to you today is take massive action. My message is take massive action. Make a decision 
Take action and move forward. When you do that in any area, any area, go deep, not wide. Sometimes people say, well, I got 20 things I got to do today. Pick one that could move the needle and focus on that one area. You do that. And you will see yourselves go out. With that being said, my name is Shay Brown. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve you this morning. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the other side. So make it a great day. God bless. And at the end of the day, keep doing God's work. We out. Peace.